this stage in the off season, what what are kind of the biggest things that you're that you're trying to accomplish with you know with a mini camp like this? Yeah, obviously we want to install our system, right? <clears throat> I know the system was different from last year to this year, so we want to install our system, install our techniques and fundamentals, and then we want to see the guys executed out on the field. How many guys stood out at the returner spot? <laughs> I knew I was going to get that question. We haven't done return, though, to be honest with you, right? So we worked on punt the first day. We worked on kickoff the second day, and then we did punt block today. Uh, I, to be, I'm being completely honest with you. I haven't seen any of our guys catch a punt, right? We haven't had any team periods yet. It's all been individual. Again, we're trying to stress the techniques and fundamentals so that we can pre prepare the guys to play again when it's time. Is that intentional, or are you going to wait and see if you get someone in the draft that has a return skill that it's set up to be you know, in a couple of weeks or whatever? Actually, I built this schedule, or we built this schedule early on. Uh, we have guys in the building that we're confident in that can catch the ball. Uh, obviously, we hope to add some other pieces, um, you know, that can catch the ball and actually return the ball in the game. Um, we'll, we'll see where that takes us, though, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not discounting any of the guys in the building. I mean, they're all professional. I got guys coming to me every day saying they want to return. Just haven't had the opportunity to do it yet. What are, what are your core principles of special teams? <laughs> I can't give you all my secrets because people are paying attention, but obviously we want guys that are good af athletes, right? That's first and foremost, guys that can move in space. We want physical guys. We want violent guys. That's just my mindset. That's just my mentality. You've got to have some type of physicality, some type of violent uh, nature about yourself to perform at a high level in the football field, in my opinion. There's no need or there's no room for guys to be soft and passive on the field. Like I said before, and I'm going to stand by this, we want to have an attack mentality. We do want to be physical. We do want to be violent. We do want to dictate the flow of the game to our opponents. I'm not going to I'm not going to shy away from that. Does that mean that I'm going to talk about another opponent? No, I'm going to talk to our guys about our system and what we want to get accomplished. Do you need to go back and look at special teams from last year to see where things were to approach if things are going to be different here then? Is that a serious question? Okay. You, you don't think I've looked at last year's special teams? I just don't feel on I, – I just feel as a special teams coach, knowing the other coordinators across the league, I'm not going to dis any, I'm not gonna disrespect anybody's scheme and what they did. Is there room for improvement? We all know there's room for improvement, right? We were 32nd in a couple categories. We're trying to address that. But to talk about what they did last year is not really going to help us moving forward. I want to cultivate and build a, a standard around here where guys want to be part of special teams. I'm going to keep saying that. That also, I'm not going to be chasing guys around the bit. Oh, please play special teams. Oh, please play special teams. That's not that's not my mentality, my mindset. Because I was a special teams player, right? I never started in the league, so I relate more to the guys that have to grind to earn a position. That's who I relate to more. So to answer your question, yes, there's a lot of things that we can improve from last year. But to keep harping on last year is not going to get us where we want to be. The thing that I try to get these guys to realize is that we want to win a Super Bowl. That's our goal to win a Super Bowl, right? Not to just go from 32nd to 31st. <laughs> That's not our goal. George Wade said he wants to address special teams in the draft. How involved have you been in that draft process of trying to find guys? Obviously, I've evaluated a lot of guys. I think myself and Coach Mike Mallory evaluated over 100 guys in the draft, right? But at the end of the day, it's going to be George and Nate's decision. Am I going to give them my input? Absolutely, because I want to improve special teams here. But at the end of the day, they're going to draft who they draft to improve our overall team. If those guys can play special teams, awesome. If those guys start a position, awesome, because then I'll gain some of the veteran players back on special teams. I'll be happy either way. When you're looking at guys in the draft, are you watching how they play special teams, or are you seeing how they play on offense and defense? That, that depends, to be honest with you, right? Because a lot of teams, if you're a starter in college, you don't have to play special teams, right? So then I evaluate the position. And then, again, I try to go to, if it's a linebacker, can he run well? Does he have the agility to, to change directions quickly in space? Can he tackle? Those are the things I'm looking for. If the guy did not play special teams in college, those are the characteristics I'm looking for as a special teams player. And obviously, he has to be smart, know the rules. When I keep talking about physicality and attack mentality, I don't want to do it at risk of being reckless. We still want to play within the confines of the rules. We still want to uh, be smart and be prepared to deal with whatever, whatever the opponent gives us. What's a realistic, what's a realistic number for four core special uh, that's that's easy. We're looking between eight and ten guys. And I know when I said this initially, a lot of people were like, whoa, right? But if you think about it, if we have two safeties, two linebackers, that's four on defense already. If we have four offensive players or we have a defensive lineman that can contribute on special teams, then you kind of have your, your, your core guys. But just so, again, I'm not going to tell everything, but we don't consider a core guy being 11 guys on the field. 
right? We have standards of a core guy that they have to grade out at a certain level to be considered a core player for us. It's not, oh, he's 11 out there. He plays four phases. He's a core guy. I get tired of hearing that. That's not a core guy for me. You have to grade out at a certain percentage and play at a high level consistently to help us. That's a core player. On this current roster, who are some of those core guys you've already identified? That's easy, right? It's Aaron Patrick, it's Tyree Cleveland. And without going into a whole bunch of names for guys getting sensitive because I didn't mention their names, I'll just stop at that. We do have core players on this squad, and then we just have to get them to that level that we want them to play at. There absolutely are a bunch of guys up here that we can use as core players. Again, I named two. I don't want to continue to name more because I don't want guys to say, hey, coach, you didn't mention me the other day. Ah, I'm sorry. I apologize. Is altitude – bit of a factor for special teams here in Denver as far as uh, kicking game you know the punt the kickoff uh, adjusting to it when you go away from Denver everybody loves to kick here that's all I can say you know what I'm saying the ball's gonna fly the ball's gonna hang everybody knows that you know everybody gets excited I'm talking about the specialists when they enter the stadium you can see them start smiling because they know they're gonna have a heck of a day right and other places if you're inside it's, it's similar to the same atmosphere Really, right? You, should, you don't have any conditions inside. It's the best place for a punter or kicker to perform inside a dome. There are no elements. There's no win, right? There's nothing that perfects him performing at a high level. And that's what we want. We want guys performing at a high level consistently. What's the key to an effective relationship with a kicker? <laughs> Say that again? I'm sorry. What's the key to an effective relationship with a kicker, Brandon McManus specifically. I mean, it, it, every relationship is, is, is you know, I, I think you have to find a common ground first and foremost with the player, right? That's how you build relationships. It's not a day one. Like, I'm sure there's a trust factor that comes involved in it with, with it also, right? I think once, once guys see that you can coach the game and you can coach the schemes, that's when they start to trust you a little bit more. That's when you build a relationship. But at the end of the day, Brandon's a professional. Sam is a professional. If they don't know what to do right now and they've been in the league this long, we have a big issue. Well, to follow up on that, he's been around for a long time, won a Super Bowl ring. Do you lean on him or have you leaned on him as far as, like, just the history with this team or, or as being a leader? Uh, no, I, and that's no disrespect to Brandon, but I've been coaching for 15 years. I've been around a lot of great players, not just kickers or specialists. I'm talking about real football players, right? Derek Brooks, Rondé Barber, Tlaib, Akib Tlaib. I mean, I can go on and on and on. So to lean on Brandon at this point in time when it's early on and there's really no stress, there's really no adversity that we've gone through, right? Everybody's been doing everything they've been asked to do. I've been, I've been overly thrilled with the guys, the group of guys we have. So to lean on Brandon right now at this point, nah, I'd rather get to know guys for myself. I like to have interaction with my players because the most important thing, in my opinion, is building a relationship with the players so that they can do whatever you ask them to do when it's time. And then you know how they react also, right? You know, you know their temperament. You know how they are. That, that's, that's more so on me as the coordinator to get to know the players and not necessarily ask Brandon because everybody has different opinions about other people, right? So. Very rarely do special teams guys bang the table for a draft in a draft. Do you know anything about this Matt Ariza kid out of San Diego State who's a punter? I mean, I've watched him just like everybody else. Again, our system is a little bit different. We're not. In our system, we're not just looking for a guy to bang the ball 50 yards, 60 yards deep. That's not what we're doing because when you punt the ball or kick the ball in the middle of the field, you give your opponent more ability to score, whether it's a kickoff return or punt return, right? We have certain rules in our system where we would prefer to put the ball or place the ball somewhere different. Again, that will show on film once we get to the preseason, et cetera. I don't want to give away all of our secrets, but we, yes, to answer your question, I've watched them. I mean, we have specialists here that can do the same thing, though.